By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are playing a game of Atlantic Old School. And to kind of have a look at what Atlantic Old School is compared to Eternal Central Old School or Swedish Old School, I have found this really handy table online. And as you can see, I've put the source down there. And in the description below, you can find a link to the blog where I found this overview. So it's very handy. If you'd like to know more about Atlantic, I would definitely advise you to visit the blog. So it's in the description below. And when I look at this, what I really notice is that I can only play one strip mine. I have mana burn. But what's important for me here is the fact that I can play with Fallen Empires. So I have an entire set to choose from because usually I play Swedish, so there's no Fallen Empire. So obviously I'm going to build something with Fallen Empire. Or actually, I have done it already. So let's take a look at my list and then I can show you with what I am playing with today. So for this particular match, I've designed Brood a deck and I'm, I'm going to call it Tally Taxes. And uh, it's named after the Talits that are in this deck. So I'm playing with four Talits and with two Elfish Farmers. And of course the Land Tax is in this deck. So I'm playing with three Land Tax. And the idea of this deck basically is get my uh, Talit creatures out early game. And then play an Armageddon so that there's no mana for my opponent. And I can just quietly create Talits and, you know, win with my huge Talit army. Now if it works... I don't know, but as you can see, I've put in two Pendle Havens. Obviously, they work great with Talus because they can make them two, three creatures. Um, I'm also playing here with a lot of one drops because my idea is I'm going to play a lot of Armageddon's, so I won't have a lot of mana, but I don't care. I don't need a lot of mana. So um, that's why I'm playing with four uh, Javaliers, Ecation Javaliers. I can use that to kind of remove smaller creatures. Uh, and it's pressure on the board. I'm also playing with Force of An Alliance. It's a 2-1. It's just a great card. You can deal some early damage there. I'm playing with three Lanawer Elves, so not with uh, four, just three. I don't really need the mana, but hey, they can still be useful, especially when I've got a Fungal Bloom in play. Um, I'm also playing so with four Talits, as I mentioned, and with two Elvish Farmers. And Elvish Farmer is really a great card uh, because you can also sack the Suprolings you make for two life. So later in the game, they can kind of save me when I have my Talit engine uh, going. Now, obviously, I'm playing um, with three Lantex and three Armageddon because that's the whole idea of the deck. So as soon as I've um, put down a Talit and a Lantex, I'm hoping to find an Armageddon and hopefully my Sylvan a library can help me with that and then I want to play out um, an Armageddon get rid of all the lands and as soon as my opponent is trying to build up uh, lands again I can use my land text and just get all the basic lands out and that means I'm probably going to draw into um, more threats for my opponent and hopefully another Armageddon um, because like I said I don't really need a lot of uh, land here in this deck it's, it's a lot of cheap spells so I'm really curious to see how this is going to work out uh, this deck and as you can see I also have a sideboard there that's on the on the top I'm playing with um, two city in the bottles maybe I should play the main I don't know of course I am playing with city of brass myself so you know I could kind of block my own lands but they're a good sideboard card I think and I'm also playing with two circle protection red of course with the whirling dervish also a cheap creature and really ideal when you have to face black decks playing with the tsunami doesn't really need an explanation and then playing with the hurricanes and then playing with the uh, the two chants and uh, the chant and the curse or are they both chants i'm not sure but they're the uh, fallen empire cards and that's just cool flavor um so this is the deck i'm playing with today and i'm actually playing against a um zoo deck you could say it's red green and white and it also has a lot of small creatures i don't have a deck list um so i don't really know what i'm up against but um i'm curious to find out so let's quickly go to game number one game number one is about to begin <clears throat> actually it has begun already my opponent there on the play with this mini zoo deck so it's uh, green it's red and it's white and it has a lot of small creatures it's playing a very interesting card here turn one it's the orcish captain and with the orcish captain um you can actually pay one it's a one one you can pay one and then choose target orc and then flip a coin and if you win the flip it's plus two plus oh and if you lose the flip it's minus O, minus two. So it's a very interesting card. So it can basically kill itself or another orc, or it can really boost it. And there we see uh, Javaliers from my side, 
but a response error with the oh look at that wow he's just killing me here um with the chain lightning and after that playing a strip mine over my savannah and now i'm playing a telete here so things are kind of going according to plan it's too bad that i'm i've lost that land but we'll see. Let's see what's going to happen here. I know my opponent has a lot of small creatures as well, so I'm expecting some more one drops from him the second turn. There's a City of Brass. Oh, look at that. Black Lotus. And oh, he's playing a Goblin War Drums. <laughs> How cool is that? He's using a Black Lotus to play Goblin War Drums. And a Nusp Asp. Asp. Nusp Asp. Asp. It's very hard to pronounce for me. Anyway, it's Arabian Knight, a 1 1 snake. When it attacks, it gives you. A little uh, snake uh, counter and you have to pay one before your upkeep or else you get an extra damage so it's actually a pretty good card and I play a lot of elves and now he's attacking me with both the asp and the orc and I believe yeah he's telling me that he wants to go and flip so he wants to he's gonna look for some coins now there we see the little bag so we see dice counters beads but also a coin, and these are actually Dutch Gilder coins. So this is the one Gilder. Now you have Euros these days. But back in the 90, 90s, we had Gilders. And we say in, in Dutch, you say Gilde. And we're going to flip. And while it's in the air, and I've put a slow-mo here, while it's in the air, I have to say heads or tails. So I said tails for this one. And unfortunately for my opponent... There you go, show it. There you go, it's tails. So I'm actually right. So, but what he does now, this is interesting. In response to that first trigger, he's going to trigger it again. So while the trigger is still on the stack, he's going to use his Orcish Captain again to give it plus two, plus oh. So it already, it's going to get minus oh, minus two, but it's going to go for the bonus as well. So it's going to flip again here. And let's see if he, if he can succeed. And there it's heads. And this time I actually said heads. So. That's a double minus O minus two for the Orcish Captain. But how cool is that to kind of see a flip? Um, and there we go. And we see now that there is actually that snake counter. So there you see me putting the B down there next to my life count. And I'm actually taking the extra damage. So that's a nice thing about the Asp. And now I'm going in full swing. The Goblin War Drums, by the way, um, basically gives creatures manas. So it says that each creature has to be blocked with at least two creatures. Oh, and there's a Chain Lightning over my Talit. That's too bad. And that's why Talits are so vulnerable. And there you see him attacking with the Asp, and I can instantly pay the one mana for the counter. So this time I don't have to take the extra damage, and I'm dealing him... Two extra damage and playing a javelier, Javeliers. So, so far so good, but my plan really to get my, my tally tokens out, it's not really working with the deck that has uh, that much direct damage. Wow, and there's a lightning bolt. At least they're not on the face, but they're on my creatures, so it's not too bad. And that's a nice thing about the Javeliers, because it has that uh, counter on it. You can use it to just deal one damage to any target. So that's why he's removing it. He doesn't want to lose uh, his uh, Asp there on the battlefield. He wants to keep it. And the image is a little blurry. Okay, we got to... There's another Chain Lightning, this time over my Savannah Lines. Look at that. So he's played three Chain Lightnings and a Lightning Bolt already. So that's 12 damage, all soaked up by my creatures. And I'm now attacking again. I'm pumping it with the Pendlehaven. So Pendlehaven is a very powerful card in this uh, in this build. Let's see what my opponent can do here. Really nice Richard Kane Ferguson art, by the way, on the Goblin War Drums. Uh, it's one of the things I like about Fallen Empires that there's a lot of Richard Kane Ferguson art. It's, he's one of my favorite artists here. And finally, I managed to get rid of the Nusp Asp. Not even sure if it's a good play. I think I should have kept my swords because the Asp is not really a huge problem for me. Um, you know, if you look at my life count, I'm still on 13. I've got the mana to pay for the, uh, the counter that's placed on there by the Asp. And what can I do now? Maybe an Armageddon because that's kind of the idea of the deck. Of course, I do lose my Pendlehaven, so maybe that's why I'm doubting. 
playing an Armageddon here. I think it would have been better to attack first, having that Pendlehaven option still. And just attacking with the lines, so he's blocking it. I don't want to sacrifice my um, Lana or else because it's a green mana. And I can use it to cast my Talits. And here you see kind of the deck working, doing what it's supposed to do. So I now got the time to get three counters on, and there's my first Suprolling token. Attacking now, putting a line there as well, and that's game. So game number one. Here we go, and I, I see I drew into a land text there. So that Armageddon worked very well here to kind of um, get uh, get my, my Talit engine going. So this was game one. Let's quickly go to game number two and see what's going to happen. Game number two. And I'm leading this one. Let's see what's gonna happen. There's a mountain and there's a black lotus again. Are you kidding me? Four mana and there's Asban Ogre, an Asp, wow, and a Sylvan Library. Look at this start. So that's direct pressure for me. It's already looking dire. I like that word, dire. Savannah here, playing a Savannah Alliance. I'm on flavor. That's good flavor points for me at least, but look at that army. And I really like combining the Asban Ogre um, with the red direct damage. Losing the line here, getting him for three damage. And again, I have to choose, am I gonna pay for the token uh, or not? For the counter, I should say, put on there by the Asp. So I'm taking extra damage. And it really shows how good the Asp is early game. Uh, but what I wanted to say is I really like the combination between the Ogre and the direct damage of red because um, when I have more life, I'm actually getting the Ogre. The Ogre just goes to the player with the most life, but when you're playing with a playset of Chains and Lightning Bolts, you probably know that you can keep the uh, the Ogre at your side. So this was an interesting turn for me, by the way. I'm probably not going to block here. Um, I have the Land Tax and the Tally, so hopefully my opponent will play a mana out that I can start drawing, so that's a good sign. Playing the Ogre, and I think that's a little mistake of my opponent, but I'll take it because I'm under so much pressure here. So the land tax activation is going off, so I get to draw three basic lands. And like I said in the introduction, uh, the little deck tech part, it's not just about drawing the lands, it's also about when you take the lands out of your deck, you're more probable of drawing something useful because they don't need a lot of lands in this deck. And that's what I mean. So I found an Elvish Farmer here. So that's a 0-2 creature and actually puts a, a Spore counter on there every upkeep as well. And when you take three off, you can make a 1-1 one, one Suprolling and you can also sacrifice a Suprolling to gain two life. So the Elvish Farmer is very dangerous for my opponent playing with the uh, Gasban Ogre because if I manage somehow to get enough uh, Suprolling tokens on the board, and sack them, I can maybe get ahead in life. But I'm, it's really a big maybe, because look at my opponent go here. His third Gaspan Ogre, also playing a Kurt Ape. That Kurt Ape is not a 2-3 yet. It's just a 1-1, because he doesn't have a forest in place. So at least that's something. I don't get a trigger from Lantex here. He didn't play another land. And maybe it was a mistake from my part as well to play out land. So that's really something, I'm pretty new to playing with Lantex. Um, Sometimes you just don't have to, you shouldn't play out a land during the land drop, but it's kind of an autopilot for me. And there's an attack here. Look at that army. Look at that go. And what can I do really? I don't want to sacrifice my farmer. Um, I do have my panel haven to pump, but I just, I guess I have to block some, block into two one ones and taking six damage here. Actually, no. Okay, of course, I'm blocking one of the Ogres because my Talit is 2-3, of course. So that's a better block. So I'm taking 5 damage in here. Going to, uh, to 4 life from 9 to 4. And a Chain Lightning going to 1 measly life total. Oh, that's a killer. At least I can get a Suprolling token on the board. Remember, I can sack that for 2 life. So I can block and I can sack after blockers are declared and before damage is dealt. Playing another Talit, I'm afraid I have to use it as a charm blocker, but I'm only on one life and he simply has more creatures than me. Because I have four creatures, he has five creatures, so 
it's basically over, but just, you know, let's see what's going to happen during combat. Maybe he makes a this weird decision, who knows. But he's not. He's just swinging with everything, so I'm trying to make an optimal block here. And I believe... Putting one of the Talits in front of a Gazban Ogre. And I'm trying to make it because I can still sacrifice one of them for two life. So I guess I'm letting the Asp through and I'm second going to three. We're kind of discussing it right now. So the two three blocks one of the Ogres, another one of the Ogres. So the Ogre dies. And there's a giant growth. Oh, man. All that trouble for nothing. <laughs> there was a giant growth. Uh, that opening of my opponent here with that Black Lotus into all those creatures was just... I think that was the start of the end here in game number two. So we're going to go to game number three and let's see who can win this matchup. Game number three. And here we go. Just that opening, that Black Lotus. Crazy. Crazy stuff. So just don't... Please... Mini Zoo deck, don't draw. I Oh, I really expect a Curd Ape here, having the Asban Ogre. And that creature has dealt some damage. I mean, it's a 2-2 two, two for one green. I mean, that's, that's pretty good. Oh, just getting my dice back in order here. Taking a hit here, going to 18. And what I wanted to say is just please don't have an opening with the Black Lotus. But, I mean, this is equally worse. Oh, okay, maybe not that worse, but it's worse. It's bad. I mean, it's bad. I mean, he has two, uh, two, two twos. In turn three. Swinging in here. At least here I've got some removal. Got a swords going. So that means I only take two damage here. And he's playing a Sylvan Library. Hopefully I can find a disenchant. Because that Sylvan can get very problematic very quickly. Playing a Savannah line here. Attacking for one. And then I am playing that disenchant. So that's that's good news here. It was a good turn for me. I can If he attacks with the gas ban... At least I can kill it with my line. We can just trade. And there's another one. Man, he's really drawing those uh, those ogres. This is uh, ogre number three. Oh, changing my mind there. <laughs> that, was, that would have been a bit of a bad play here. Um, yeah, this is the order we want to do it in. So playing a City of Brass after that Armageddon. And this might look strange because I'm playing an Armageddon even though he has a stronger creature on the board. But I had a plan, of course. And look at this. I'm going here. And this is exactly what I want to do. My opponent has no mana. I have a lot of mana. And I can just swing in here two at a time. And hopefully I can find a Talit here. My opponent playing a mountain. I only have one card in hand. So he's playing that lightning bolt. So do I have another creature? Maybe I don't. Playing a savannah lines here. And he's playing a chaos orb. This is nice. Playing a land tax. Attacking him here. Taking the damage. And I wonder if he's going to flip on my lion. Maybe he is. And yes, he is going to flip on the line. Let's see if he can hit the line. And uh, the reason he's doing it in his own, um, on his own turn, by the way, is that he's afraid of me getting a disenchant from the draw. So here we go. I've put it in slow mo. And uh, bam! That was a nice flip. And also a nice angle with the camera there. So that's a full hit. That's some good flipping by my opponent. And this Savannah Lines is gone. Playing another land. Unfortunately, I have so many lands. I cannot really use my land tax. And playing a balance here. And my hand is empty. And look at that. My opponent is losing so many cards. That's so nice. And I don't really mind losing a land here. Because it gets me closer to a land tax activation. And I think I also saw Wheel of Fortune in there for my opponent. All my opponent really needed there was a creature. Because I think he had like three giant growths. So that balance was just spot on. And there's the Elvish Farmer. 
And this is interesting, Pay, playing a strip mine, so I could strip my own creature to activate. That's exactly what I'm doing to activate my land tax. So my land tax triggers now, because I have less land, and I can look up three basic lands here. So this is great, and getting a counter there on my Elvish Farmer. So my deck is kind of doing what it's supposed to do. So there is a Spore counter there. Would be nice to have a blocker now. Um, and there, in response to the pump with the Pendlehaven, I'm playing a sword, so that means he only gains one life. Great, just having that sword to plow here. And there's no trigger. And this is what I talked about before. I'm kind of in the habit of playing a land every turn, and I really shouldn't do that. Well, maybe in this case I should, so I guess I had an Armageddon where I wanted to work towards. Playing another Armageddon. My opponent plays a land, triggering my land tax, and also I'm getting another Spore Counter. So the way the deck is, is performing now is exactly what I had in mind when I designed it. So forcing my opponent to play out lands, because you need lands to do something, and at the same time, wiping the lands over and over again, and being able to get those Suprolings going. So this is a Suproling token, playing a Talit here. So that's great, and I'm curious to see what my opponent's doing. It's not playing a land, unfortunately, but I do have the Sylvan, of course, so I can go through my first three cards and decide what I want to do. Playing a Javaliers now. So I'm really just getting ahead of the game now. And my opponent's on a higher life total, but that won't take long. Putting some more Spore Counters on there. Looking at my top three cards. And attacking here. Dealing three more damage. And playing a lot of Rails. And as you can see, I've now kind of stopped uh, playing cards. And now I can use the Javelier to kind of get rid of the Curd Ape and swing to get some damage in. Tapping to play another creature. And look at how quickly that goes because I'm playing so many one drops. So just with two mana, look at what I can do. And there's the third Suprolling token. Now remember, two of them have Summoning Sickness. And there I'm throwing my spear to the Ape, and the Ape dies. And I can attack. Obviously, I want to do that as quickly as possible before he can potentially draw into a forest. And, okay, he's not. I, I just thought he was going to use it. He's not using his strip mine. Probably just wants to use it for land here. And I'm playing another Javaliers. Look at the amount of creatures on the board. Attacking with three Suprolling tokens. A Talit, Savannah Lines, and a Lanawar. And look at his life total go it's already on just three life. And he's playing land number three, and he's showing that he had Channel Fireball all the time in his hand. So <laughs> I guess I guess that Armageddon was very well timed because if he could have done that, he was ahead in life total for a long time here in this game. And he had a great start as well, putting a lot of pressure on the table. But I managed to win this one. So it's a victory for Tully Taxes. It's a one-two. Um, I really like how this deck works. It's not you know, great yet. I'm wondering if I want to keep the Fungal Bloom. Um, as you could see, I didn't really play it out or see it in action. It's just a little bit too expensive, I think, for this deck. So maybe I'm going to replace that, for example, with two Giant Groves. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, could you let me know what you think? Would you keep Fungal Bloom in this deck or would you take it out? Uh, for now, thank you for watching this episode of Timmy Talks. If you'd like to see more old school magic, you can uh, click on the videos that are appearing on the screen right now. Um, if you're not a member yet, a subscriber yet of the channel, please do so. You really help me out. I want to get to a thousand. Uh, please like and leave a comment. Would you keep the fungal bloom in or take it out? For now, thank you for watching this episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And see you next time. Ik het als vinkertjes samba kan zien.